So I failed my exam. So right off, this video is not clickbait. The first time I took the exam, I failed. Uh, for those that don't know, I was trying for the Encore exam and Cisco was doing a 50% off coupon recently and I thought, what the heck, I'll take advantage of it. Now I loosely studied for this exam probably about six months and uh, I would say it was definitely difficult. Had I put more effort into particular areas, I think I would have done better. Um, but I think the exam was pretty fair. I originally planned on taking the exam in April, but because of that promotion, I thought, well, if I can save $200 and I pass the exam, it's a win. So needless to say, I scheduled the exam, um, went ahead and took the exam and I missed it by just a little bit. Uh, I think it was like a 789. I mean, it was still a little bit off, but I felt I felt like I missed it close enough um, based on my scores. Uh, I didn't do really good on network assurance and I'll show you that here in just a moment when I pull my scores up. But I did end up uh, failing the first attempt and so I thought to myself, well, I missed it. Um, why don't I just reschedule it for my original exam date in April? So that's what I ended up doing. Um, but then once I really looked at the areas that I filled in, I thought, well, what the heck? Let's reschedule it and try again. And so that's what I ended up doing. And I'm happy to say it's flipped, but I passed. Uh, so my second attempt, I did pass. Uh, I, I definitely blew my score out of the water. I got 100% in several areas as well. Um, so I'll be excited to show you that. Let's go ahead and pull up my report for my first time around and let's pull up my second report and then I'll get into what actually I used to pass the exam. Okay, so I've got logged in here to the Pearson View website uh, on the Cisco side and let's go ahead and go to exam history. So you can see here uh, uh, back in August of 2019, I passed the CSEN exam. Then that same year in November, I went and took the ICND2 to get my CCNA. Then on February the 24th, I took the Encore exam and failed. I rescheduled it to April the 12th, canceled that because then I took it on the 4th and actually passed. So let's go back and let's pull up uh, my score reports. So the first time around I, I failed, right? But I was pretty happy with my score as far as I kind of took it on a whim, um, a, a full month ahead of when I originally was going to take it. But if you look right here, this is what really hurt me. Network assurance, I only got 30%. I was getting hit with some SLA questions that I thought I knew. Uh, but once I got to those questions, turns out I didn't. So I got hit really hard with SLA. I did pretty good with architecture and virtualization. Um, virtualization for me was pretty easy just because I work with uh, VMware ESXi every day at work um, so for me that was pretty easy um, architecture is something that i really love the design uh, aspect of uh, networking so i did pretty well on that as well um, infrastructure i did okay and security and automation i i could have done better but i feel like if i would have scored at least a 70 here in network assurance i would have passed the first time around so my initial score was 774 and it was a fail. Let's go ahead and look at my passing score. And this is a big improvement, especially in network assurance. Uh, after I failed the first time around, I wanted to be sure that I passed. Uh, so I really studied network assurance and you can see I got 90% of that. So this time around, I actually finished the exam a lot faster. Uh, first time around, I probably only had maybe 15 minutes left uh, for the exam. This time around, I, I wanna think it took me a little maybe an hour uh which seems really fast and that's because it was uh i got a lot of the same questions i had the first time around um so i caught those questions pretty quickly and i think that was an advantage of retaking the exam so early was some of the questions were still in my head um, after the exam and so i immediately jotted down some of the questions and i was like okay i got hit really hard with sla let's study that um and, and several other things without getting too into detail what i struggled with particularly the network assurance pretty much snmp stuff like that um that's where i got hit the hardest in the first exam and that's why i failed um 
But regardless, you can see my second report is a lot better. Virtualization, I'm proud of. I got 100% there. Um, architecture, I improved. Infrastructure, I improved. Network assurance, security, and automation, I improved in every one of those. And my final score was 889. Now, I want to say if I would have taken more time, because I did finish the exam super early, had I taken even more time to sit there and read some of the questions, I probably would have scored above 900. Um, on my uh, CCNA exam for my ICND 1 and 2, I did score um, a 900 on my ICENT or the ICENT on the CCN exam, and I scored, um, I believe, like an 889 somewhere around that range so uh i scored 896 so i've been scoring kind of in the same area and uh with all of my cisco exams that i've taken so far so that's where we're at so really excited about passing this exam let's get into the resources that i actually use to pass the exam and hopefully help you guys where you're at so the first thing that i use to pass the exam uh really is and this is in no particular order although i do want to give a shout out to ine um i've used cbt nuggets it pro tv and i used ine for all three or excuse me i use all three of those video on demand services for this exam but ine really was the game changer for me once they changed their pricing um, i switched over and started using it for the first time and the way they break down some of the topics and a lot of people don't like this about ine but they get really in depth but for this type of exam i found that that helped me out more uh, as far as the the depth that they got into uh, cbt nuggets and it pro tv both did a phenomenal job and i think they are more of a, a higher level overview in some areas but ine really was the deciding factor for my score in the second exam especially Especially on virtualization and some topics like that um, it, it really helped so solidify some of those topics uh, I want to thank automation um, I would have to say INE definitely has the best uh, material on automation um, IT Pro TV was also great I think IT Pro TV um, kind of made it more in an entree style where it was a, a smaller to break down um, so I'm really happy with INE or excuse me IT Pro TV I, I think I've said that wrong IT Pro TV I'm really excited for what they did they kind of broke everything down into smaller videos um, which was really manageable I use CBT nuggets for my first exam with Cisco which was my CSENT and I used it for my CCNA the ICND2 uh, Jeremy is is phenomenal uh, I don't think anybody can say anything bad about his teaching style it works for me and I think the way that he puts the topic out there and spins it off as something fun and exciting that is what made it extremely valuable for me however for this new exam for the encore to me and this is just my personal opinion there was too many instructors on the instructors on the exam uh, for the videos in particular they just it was all over the place. I didn't feel like it was structured as clean as INEs or IT Pro TV. I feel like it was kind of shotgun shelled. Um, and I don't feel like there was as good of collaboration as far as the instructors were concerned. Jeremy, Keith Barker, Network Chuck, I think those guys did really well on their topics. Uh, Jeff Kish did really well as well. Um, I think there were several other instructors on there as well. I think all of them did well on their topics. I just feel like in some areas it was just all over the place. Um, Jeremy's BGP section, phenomenal. I think that is the best BGP videos at least that I've seen um, on CBT Nuggets, INE, and IT Pro TV. Uh, in particular, Jeremy's personal YouTube channel, I think it's called Keeping It Simple, um, one of his videos on BGP really helped me in the exam i'm not going to say what particular video it was but be sure you check out his personal youtube channel to keep it simple um he has a video on there um, on bgp that was on the exam again not saying which one it was but hopefully you'll find it um so ine cbt nuggets it pro tv those were the three video on demand services i used but i also used um Kevin Wallace's YouTube channel. He has a, a BGP path attributes video. Um, be sure to check that out as well. That really helped me solidify uh, the path attributes in BGP. I feel like the OCG 
uh, was something else that I used, but I feel like the OCG's BGP section wasn't as in depth as it could have been, especially when it come to uh, route management filtering and stuff like that. I did have some of those questions um, on practice tests that I took that uh, I was like, this wasn't in the book. So again, check out all these resources. This may not work for everyone. This is just stuff that I used. Next thing I used was Boson. Um, I think I've, I definitely have uh, used them for all of my exams. Um, they're phenomenal. They really are Boson. Uh, the XM, NetSim, all of that is really great. I used Boson for my first two Cisco exams and I used it for this one. Um, I think the, uh, the XM is pretty on par for the exam. There's definitely questions on the exam and on the Boson uh, practice software that you're just sitting there and you're kind of scratching your head. Um, that's that's a lot of, of what this exam consisted of. So I think they really hit the nail again with their practice exams. Be sure to check that out as well. One of the last things I did was lab. Now this exam was more, uh, I feel like theory, but I did have uh, quite a few uh, configuration questions on this exam and it it came in handy to lab some of the stuff. Um, so be sure you, that you check out um, either NetSim, EvenG, GNS3, some of those. I used all three. Um, I didn't use Packet Tracer this time around. For my first two, I did. This one was just some of the topics were so advanced that uh, you just, it's not possible in Packet Tracer. So EvenG, GNS3 as well as uh, Boson NetSim. I used all three of those. Uh, I constructed my own labs in even G and GNS3. I've made several BGP labs that I, I like route prepending and stuff like that. Uh, I, I labbed that a lot. Uh, I didn't lab so much filtering uh, for like, let's say OSPF, EIGRP. Uh, I did maybe one or two labs on that, but I really focused on BGP. Uh, for me, it's, a, it's a, a very cool protocol to play around with and try and affect the attributes on it and affect routing. Um, so I played around a lot with that. Um, but again, this is in no particular order of the stuff that I actually used. Uh, there's probably a lot more that I can't think of off the top of my head, um, but this was just kind of a simple list um, of the stuff that I did use. So with all that being said, where I'm at now is I will be focusing on starting next week. I'm going to be focusing on doing um, the Insari exam. I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but it is the advanced routing. I've went ahead and picked up the OCG book. I'm going to be doing the same resources. I'm going to use CBT Nuggets, IT Pro TV, uh, INE. I'm going to be using all of those video on demand services as well as the official cert guide, Boson. And this time around, I'm going to heavily focus on labs. Um, I think, again, the Encore exam, I wasn't expecting some of the uh, questions that they asked in regards to configuration. Uh, just because I feel like it's all over the place. This exam really is um, all over the place on topics. Uh, so if I had to give any advice, know your show commands. Um, know why you would issue a certain show command and make sure you know the output of those show commands as well as the configuration. Um, again, there wasn't any questions where uh, it was like a simulation sort of like for the CCNA exams where it was uh, configure this uh, and you actually got to do it, but there were questions on the exam that you needed to know the configuration. So if you go under the exam blueprint and you see um, configure, know how to configure, make sure you know how to do that because it will be on the exam. Uh, at least uh, it has a high chance of being on the exam. Uh, so again, I'm moving on now to advanced routing. Uh, and I think once I complete that, I'm probably going to move on to some of the more specialist exams from Cisco. Um, I really like SD-WAN, so I may uh, do that one as well. Um, or I might move on to DevNet. I haven't really decided uh, which path I want to take. Uh, I did start on um, several weeks ago. I started on the NSC exam, uh, which is, I think, the network security expert. Uh, that's by Fortinet. Uh, I started on that. Um, we'll be using Fortinet uh, here pretty soon in production where I work at uh, for the firewall and uh, I'll be pretty excited to get into that. Um, so hopefully this is just going to be a, a quick short little video on the stuff that I use for the exam uh, as well as an update 
that I did pass, uh, although I failed the first time. So thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions or concerns, be sure to leave them down in the comments. Hopefully I can start posting regularly um, since I've passed this exam. Um, I can actually sleep and there's not as much stress. Um, but thank you guys for watching. See you next time.